Hey guys, J77 here. Um, gonna finish off uh, my Back to the Future trilogy by talking about the very first one, Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Um, I'm basically gonna give you my likes and dislikes on this because, like, if, for, for be honest with you, if you haven't seen Back to the Future, you need to go out, rent it on Netflix, rent it on DVD, or get the whole entire trilogy. Believe me, it's worth your money, it's worth your um, your time and effort because this is a very, very good movie, a classic within itself. Pretty much the new, the new classics um, that is constantly being compared by other films, including video games and uh, movies. So with that being said, let me tell you the, oh, the bad thing I didn't like about this movie because there's very few things um, I did not click with the film. Um, the beginning. Um, the beginning had a nice um, start to it. Um, you know, you see Michael J. Fox, you know, playing with his guitar, turning up every, turning up the high volume of the of the, um, of the speakers, and when he tried to play a note, it basically um, the the sound was so intense that it actually blew him backwards. Um, that's pretty much our introduction to Martin McFly's character. Um, after that, in between, I was kind of bored. I mean, it was. Uh, Pretty much nothing was going on. That's largely because it was a lot of expedition. We was getting introduced to a lot of characters. Um, we was introduced to uh, Marty McF McFly, of course, at the beginning. We also got introduced to his girlfriend, um, Jennifer, um, which by then was played by a different um, actress. It wasn't played by Leah Thompson. Um, we was then introduced by his father, um, Mr. McFly, his mother, um, and um, one of my favorite villains in all movies, um, one of my top ten favorite villains, um, Beth. Um, we was quickly introduced to all these characters. Um, we, we also learned that you know he had a sister, he had an uncle who was in jail. So we had a lot of stuff that was being told. But it really, um, to me, especially when at, at a young age that I watched this movie, it dragged a little bit. It's like, all right, is, is, is anything going to happen? It's supposed to be Back to the Future. So obviously, it's supposed to be a time time movie. Why is nothing happening? That changed the moment he um, he met up with um, Doc Brown. And that's, by the way, it's the only thing that I didn't like about this movie. The only thing was that the beginning, it, tend, it slowed down a, a little bit with me. Uh, everything else is pure gold to me. Um, the chemistry between uh, Michael J. Fox and um, Christopher Lloyd, right on the money. I actually thought they, they worked it brilliantly to each, with each other. They were, they were the perfect cast. And it was kind of funny that, um, that Michael J. Fox almost didn't um, get that role because of his, um, his work commitment with Family Ties. And thank goodness they was able to um, work that out where he actually was able to do Family Ties and at the same time work on, uh, on the movie Back to the Future. Uh, but needless to say that almost didn't happen. Uh, and unfortunately because of what Robert Zemeckis saw between the um, actor they had before and Christopher Lloyd what they're filming, um, that pretty much convinced him to go a different direction. Um, I actually, I loved it, the fact that this movie also was a mixed genre. You, it was a high school film, yet it was also a comedy, yet it was also a science fiction film. And normally when you have a, a mixed genre, it tends to be a lot of uh, more than a mist and a hit, but in this one, it you know it was perfect. It it was pretty much balanced perfectly. Um, the story was 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 good. The um the acting was superb, and the um and the pacing, the deception, the part of the beginning, the pacing of this movie really did uh, work its way through very nicely. It wasn't too fast and it wasn't too slow. It really did um, found the even balance. Um, my favorite scene in the movie, of course, there's a, there's a lot of them. Uh, one of the favorite scenes is that when he finally, you know, did went to to, to the past of 1955. Um, he crashed into a um, he crashed into a uh, family's um, barn. Um, he got out of the car. They looked at him, and you see the, the person with the comic book in his hand. And he's like, "Oh my God, the aliens are finally coming!" And that was during the time of paranoia, of course. So I can understand that. <coughs> but Marty, well, Marty, when he came out the car, he had the um, the suit, the radioactive suit. So they they didn't have radioactive suits like that back in the days, I, I guess. And they panic. <laughs> um, they ran out the, the the barn. He took off the suit. He tried to you know trying to say you know I'm sorry to hit the, you know I crashed in your barn, but they didn't, they didn't buy into that, and he got he almost got shot at. Um, he managed to escape, but that was one of my favorite scenes. The other scene, the skateboard scene, classic scene. Um, he's trying desperately hard to um, to get his family together, only to have Biff mess it up. 
um, leading to probably one of the best um, um, chasing sequences I have seen in, in comedy films, uh, which end up Biff crashing his car into a uh, whole truck full of manure, which seemed to repeat itself a lot during this film and the other two films. Um, and of course we have the infamous suspense of Doc Brown trying to get Marty McFly back in the future by connecting the cable wires from the clock tower all the way down to the, um, to the road. Um, I guess one of my favorite scenes would he, um, you know, use the wire and, sl and slide all the way down from the clock tower to the ground and connected the, uh, the two wires together, seeing the car go right back into the, right back to present day 1985. Um, from from the start to finish, you know, right right from that whole sequence, I was into that. I was very very into it. I was screaming at the screen, saying that this can't be happening. I mean, this, can, this can't be happening. And I thought he was not going to make it because the way that the way they done it was really brilliantly made. And this is pretty much solidified as Doc Brown. Although I love Mar I love Michael J. Fox as uh, Martin McFly. And there's never going to be another Martin McFly like him. Uh, Michael J. Fox pretty much um, sealed that role. But I always liked it the character of Doc Brown. I thought Doc Brown was uh, a well-developed character. Um, he said some words that was outrageously crazy, but it was fun to hear him say it at the same time. I think Christopher Lloyd nailed it in the park when, uh, when he was in um, that character. Um, there were two stories that's pretty much everybody knows. The one of the story has to deal with Martin Fly getting back to his home, back to his timeline, while at the same time he has to make sure <laughs> his family gets together otherwise it doesn't really matter he's not born so that's where the second story comes up um there was not much filler other than the fact that um instead of <laughs> his mother falling in love with um with his father he she ended up falling off with him um and that's largely because of Marty Fly present in the past his him being there pretty much disrupted a lot of things but one of the things he shouldn't ever have disrupted unintentionally by the way is pushing his father out of, of the way of a, of a moving vehicle where he got hit by a car and I guess I think they explained that when he how she how she ended up being with uh, with um, with Martin McFly uh, father was George McFly um, he got hit by that car and that pretty much started a chain event leading to the prom where that kiss um, pretty much still did that she was truly in love with him. That same um, now, Martin had to find a way to get them together where they are dancing in the prom and the kiss um, took place causing a chain of events. So he has to deal with that and that, that was always something very interesting. Um, I gotta say, the, the, the music, the soundtrack, I gotta tell you, it's the most memorable soundtrack. If I can remember anything else, it's those two soundtracks, The Power of Love and Backward Time. Um, you can't have a Back to the Future uh, movie without at least um, hearing those two, um, <coughs> those two songs. Um, they are classic songs, they never go old. I can listen to it right now and still rock to that. Um, it is played in pretty much every classic um, 70, 80, 90s radio station. Um, you can probably find and um, it's almost hard to when you hear that it's almost impossible not to identify that with Back to the Future and by the way the score is absolutely phenomenal I love that score there's a lot of scores that you, when you hear it you know what that movie is about this is one of those scores and I'm actually happy that this score was presented in Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, uh, Back to the Future 3 and the video game for that matter which I will be talking about um, down the road um, like I said, um, this film pretty much uh, had a bumpy road. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little bit before I continue. Um, this film, like I told you, Marky J. Fox was not involved in this film. Um, at first, he was the first choice. <coughs> Excuse me, but he was not. Um, he was not selected. Um, a lot of studios looked at this film as a failure. Not many people was picking this up. Universal was the like, like the last strong. And I think that was because Steven Spielberg, um, Apple Entertainment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, had um, pretty much saw a potential this film, and they were convinced Universal Studios to um, to help um, to distribute this film. But this film had a very rocky start from the start. Um, when they fired or he left the original actor, um, that film set them back big time. It was a, it was delayed. It cost them a lot of money, and it, the budget just just doubled. Um, from what it originally had because they had to you know reshoot the scenes that the original actor was in with Michael J. Fox so that pretty much um, the stakes was actually very very um, high for this movie 
Um, and the fact that this film not only went above expectation but became a cult hit pretty much solidified just how much word of mouth and how good this film is because word of mouth actually helped this film. Word of mouth was the reason why this film was so successful. The same thing with Ghostbusters, the same thing with even Gremlins. A word of mouth really, really pushed this film to the height level. Um, if you got any only thing I was actually surprised about with this film is I was surprised how much adult theme was in this movie. Um, when I watched it before, I didn't pay attention because I was a kid. You know, I really didn't know what curse words, curse words, was was until I got grounded. Um, but as I got older, when I started revisiting the movie, especially when the other two movies started to come out, I was a little bit surprised that this was a PG film. Granted, um, PG, um, there was no PG-13 until, what, 1985, um, 86? Um, but this film had a lot of adult theme in it. It had a lot of stuff they actually got away with it. Incest is definitely one of them. Um, and... Um, the swearing, the cursing, the manure. Um, this film really wasn't meant for children. I think it was meant for like young teenagers, you know, young adults. Because um, I was really alarmed. Even two and three was almost the same thing. Three was a little bit more tame, but two I definitely remember had a lot of cursing in the film. Um, mind you, the rating system again, PG-13 didn't really solidify himself fully until like after '86. But <clears throat> I was a little bit surprised by that. Um, by how much a dope theme was, so that's why to say it is a family film, I, I consider this as a sci-fi, <coughs> high school sci-fi, you know, comedy. That's what I see it as, and I think a lot of people also see it as that. Because to say it's a family film, um, judging from the content that I've seen from the film now, um, I, I seriously doubt it. But it doesn't, it doesn't um, deter, it doesn't deter me from from saying this is a good, good film. Um, <coughs> What else that I can actually say? Pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, this film is very well done. Um, Robert Zemeckis has uh, done a great job. This film has been commented by even the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, um, at the time. Um, and this film pretty much, you know, gave the DeLorean a car that was, that was an absolute failure. Um, just by that price tag alone, a, an identity. I mean, when you think of DeLorean, you're going to think of Back to the Future. Um, and it's kind of ironic because this, uh, <clears throat> this car has a history within itself, and it's not always a, a, a good history. But um, the DeLorean is definitely um, forever connected with this movie, and it's kind of cool because I love that car um, in this movie. Um, <clears throat> my rating for this film... Clearly, it's a, it's a three and a half out of four. Like I said, the only beef I had in this film, the only dislike, it really, if you take a look at this, the beginning, it took its time. It really did. It took its time for me to get in. And I'm like, is anything really going to happen here? But once it happened, I was glued. I, I wanted more and more and more and I just was I was in it throughout the rest of the film um that's very um and that's why I say souls who want a fast paced film you just gotta be patient and go through the first 15 minutes of the movie because uh, once after once he meets up with um with Doc Brown that's when the fun begins and I, and that, that just tells you again just how strong um, those two actors worked with each other. I'm very, very happy about that. So, um, that's it. I still got the animated series, which, by the way, that, that was the only reason why um, <clears throat> I actually delayed on doing this. Um, there was a, I was a lot of information I was trying to get on the animated series because I have some, I've seen very a lot of episodes up to a certain degree, but I needed to say uh, this show did not have a greater impact on me than the... Than the uh, than the movies. I will explain um, um, down somewhere down the road. But until then, it's J77 saying you guys take care.